Hey everybody, Danny Ward here. Thanks for joining us. How often do you find yourself around a green like this and you know you should be getting up and down or at least close to the hole, but you end up duffing it in front of your nose or you thin it over the back of the green. How do you get distance control? How do you get that consistent strike? Well, I've got this one thing that I share with most of my students actually who are struggling with their chipping and it seems to work nearly every single time. So I want to share with you exactly what that is because it's really, really simple and I know that you could do it, okay? Now before I get into the lesson though, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, I always put a free download little practice guide in the description box below. Okay, great. So I think you're going to really love this because it is super, super simple and even surprisingly so. So we're going to cover this in three stages. But first of all, I'm going to show you how the body moves, how the body and the arm simply move um, to kind of get the club swinging freely. The second thing we're going to talk about is how you strike, you know, what happens to the golf club through the impact area. And third and finally, we'll then look at different lies around the green. So how you apply this very simple system to chipping from dodgy lies, hard lies, you name it, okay? Now, the first thing to realize is this. It's a lot easier than you're probably making it. If you're struggling with your chipping, okay, most of the time it comes into a couple of buckets. Either you're rock solid in your legs like this and you're relying too much on your arms and like this and you end up jabbing it into the ground, okay? Or your body's moving all over the place but now you're stiff with the arms. It's one or the other. What we want to have in the body action is this lovely flowing motion of the arms and also a kind of synchronization of the body. But how do you go about achieving it? Well, it's super, super simple and I know that you can do it. Now, I'm gonna cover both right and left-handers because some people might be playing golf right-handed but are actually left-handed. Same principle. Look at this. All I'm gonna do is gonna throw some balls under arm to this hole. And what I want you to notice is watch how my arm swings freely and my body look naturally turns slightly towards the target, okay? It does not do this. I'm not rigid and neither am I stiff like this. There's always a lovely flow to the motion. So that's the very first thing I just want you to do. You just get a sense of a few underarm throws towards the hull. Now you might be playing golf left-handed but right-handed, no problem. So take the ball, <coughs> it's a little bit trickier, but it's the same principle. Out of your left hand, okay, I'm gonna literally gonna throw this ball. Now I wouldn't throw it like this and stay rigid, neither would I have a stiff arm. There would be a rhythm, okay, to this motion, yeah? So just imagine that, get that sense of how the body and the arms are syncing up. Now what I do is, is once you've got this rough idea, is we don't worry about strike to start off with, but what I do is I get people to get themselves set up. Now I've got a 56 degree wedge here. Okay, I get the ball, you can have it back, you stand middle, middle, you stands forward, he stands, we'll cover that in a second, but middle's fine for now. Hold the club just in your trail arm. And what we're gonna do is, is I want you to make some swings and I don't want you to focus on trying to strike a specific spot. I actually want you to do what you've just been doing. Just imagine you're throwing the, uh, a ball onto the green and you're matching everything up. Notice where the butt end's finishing here for me. I am not driving it here with my handle. I'm not jabbing it down. There's a flow. My body's not rigid. It's a flow to the target, okay? So we spend a bit of time, and then I would actually hit a few shots, put my left arm behind my back. I'm gonna hit a few shots, just one-handed, okay? Just getting a sense of that motion there. Now, see my ball's gonna slide to the right there. Why? Because I did not release the club. I didn't throw the ball, I literally held on to it too much. So what I'm gonna do here is release it like I'm throwing and look at the difference in accuracy. So this is really good for you to practice because even the, my dodgy shot there, that's me, I wouldn't throw a ball like this, I got, maybe I'm on camera, I got a little bit nervous there. I went like this, yeah? As opposed to just throwing it. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Try the exact same with your le uh, lead hand, no difference whatsoever. You get yourself set here, lead hand, and literally just let it throw towards your target, okay? Now let's add now the all important club. So when you're doing this motion, you probably notice that your hand's fairly loose as you're throwing the ball. You're not gripping on for dear life. Well, that's the same when you're chipping too. I want you to ask yourself, as you're swinging backwards and forwards, how tight are you gripping it first? And secondly, is that grip pressure actually tightening or even loosening too much when you get to the golf ball? Because 
One of the things I'm seeing a lot is if you're duffing it, it's often because there's a sudden, sudden tightness through the impact area, or you kind of then jerk it through impact, yep. So check your grip pressure out, super, super important, yeah. Try to keep it a nice, even pressure all the way through the shot, okay. That's one of the secrets to get, to get that lovely, soft contact where the ball gets a little bit of spin, okay. Now, Questions like, where does my weight distribution, where's the ball position, all those things. Where should the shaft be? Well, let's cover that. So, weight position. Well, look, when you're throwing a ball, where is it? I don't know about you, but when I'm throwing a ball forward, it's on my left foot, my lead foot. So, that's what I want you to be. Feel the similar sensations. Where's the shaft? Well, look, do I want it back here? Do I want it here? No, I want it neutral, right? Fairly straight. If I get the shaft too lean forward, the danger here is I might get the leading edge digging in the ground. We don't really want that at all. That's the often causes the fat. So, we want this club to naturally turn to neutral. How do you do that? Well, look, if you are truly swinging the arm, the club will automatically, look, fall down to neutral. What stops the club falling down to neutral is when you hang on for dear life, drive the handle. That's gonna stop it. What, what else does this do? Well, look whether, if you drive the handle, the club's up here. Ever felt this? Where your knees start to go sometimes as well? Again, all things by hanging on, driving that handle. So, now you've got the flowing arm, allow the club also, look, to flow through the motion. Don't be worried about hitting the ground, allow the club to hit the ground, because as it hits, as it uh, drops out, it's gonna drop like this, and the bounce is gonna hit the ground. That's absolutely fine, okay? Now, spend some time getting that sensation, nice loose grip, but how do you change the ball flight? Well, let's go into that in a second, okay? So it's nice and smooth. Popped out to the right for me there. Why did it pop out to the right? Well, let's now explain. So one of the things is this. When you're swinging, one of the, what you've got to be able to do here is you've got to be able to control the club face. So if I want to now swing and keep this club flowing, but actually have a nice low trajectory, then what would you do if you threw a ball? Well, just imagine throwing a ball low to the ground. If you did that, where's my torso? Over the top, look at this. I feel I'm throwing it this way, yeah? So if I want to hit a slightly lower chip shot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel the same thing as I would do if I was going to throw a ball low, okay? Watch this. There's a lower flight. Look at it release a little bit more, okay? Now, what would I want you to do if you were gonna throw a higher shot, hit a higher shot? Well, same principle, look at this. What am I gonna do now? What do you notice with my body? What's my body doing? It's working where? Upwards a little bit more, okay? So I take this same, same sensation, whether it's left-handed or right-handed, I'm taking the same sensation. It is pretty straightforward, yeah? So then what we'll do is, is apply exactly the same thing now, taking those feelings and go, right, okay, I'm gonna imagine, look, throwing a ball a little bit higher. Notice the difference in that motion to my low one. There's my low one. There's my slightly higher one, yeah? The body's matching just a simple throw. Now, I may even move the ball forward in my stance just to help a fraction, but all I'm gonna do here is keep that motion swinging back, and I'm gonna go up, and it goes a little bit higher, yeah? Now, with all this, you just start to practice getting the sensation of the body going up for high, staying low for low. So why is it important to know these shots? Because when you get difficulties like we're gonna see in a second, super, super important. So here we've got a ball that's kind of nestled in the rough, okay? And what we're gonna need here is a little bit high. If you look at this hole here, we've, we're gonna need the ball stopping fairly quickly. So we don't change a lot. I mean, what I'm gonna do here, the ball's gonna be fairly forward. I am still gonna have um, the same, I've got 50, 60 degree wedge. I could go to a 60 if I wanted, but I don't really need to. And then all I'm gonna do is look, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna imagine getting the club swinging through, and I'm gonna finish nice and high. Now, what I will be doing is I'll be getting a sense of the grass. How much grab is in this grass? Can I still keep flowing? Because if the grass is quite thick, then I might need a little bit more kind of speed to go through it. But everything else remains the same, okay? I'm actually gonna be looking at trying to strike the ground a little bit behind the ball, but finish. Look at this, nice and high. As I finish high, the ball goes high, okay? Now, when would I want 
or what would I do if I wanted to play a low? Let's say the, the ball is at the back of the green. All I would do is, is I, I might not want a high shot, I might want to choose a slightly easier one. If the ball's nestled down a little bit more, I may even get the ball more central in my stance. I might even go for a lower flight, okay? But the same principle as applies. If I wanted to go lower, I just imagine throwing lower, finishing lower. And look at this, I'm going to now go beyond the flag to the back right of the green. And now I've got a lower flight look, which is coming there. You can see I've chopped down into this, and that's going to release beautifully out to the back of the green. So it gives you options when you're playing, okay? So when you're playing these shots, remember, get the body and the arms synced up. Look at my arm here. It's connected to my body, and it's working with my body, not independently. My body's not stiff, trying to strike it or stay still. Keep the body flowing. Allow the body to move up when you're throwing higher shots. Okay, stay maybe a bit lower, okay, when you're throwing lower shots, okay? Change your clubs. Distance control, a lot of people ask me about distance control. How do I get it so I can actually land near the, uh, near the hull? Look, apart from practice, well, how did you learn how to throw it near the hull? You threw with kind of practice. But what we didn't do was this. We, when I throw a ball to you, I'm throwing it. What I'm not doing, it's not a stiff arm. So this is where, ultimately, the more rhythm you can create in this, the more distance control you will also get, okay? Now, I've got another video which you're gonna be able to access right here, uh, which is all about chipping, right next to the edge of the green, right? It's a cool little chip, just for chip and runs. It's not about getting height or anything, but it'll help you with your chip and run shots. But if you do enjoy this video, maybe you sure, uh, maybe sure to give it a like and share it with a friend who's maybe struggling with their chipping. And remember, look, if you're new to the channel, come and join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And of course, there's a free download practice guide in the description box below. But until next week, have a great golfing week.